in blue zones, people over 80, 90 have drank, the vast majority have drank a little bit every day of their lives, mm -hmm. of their adult lives. And, and they've still gotten into their 90s or 100s and they're sharp and they're enjoying life. And uh, it's not mutually exclusive with having a full, yeah. wonderful life. Are there other things that um, that you noticed along the lines of diet and exercise? What are some other kind of common principles that you saw? Yeah, so I want to make clear that th my work is not as anecdotal as it is um, uh, in, in aggregation of the available research. Mm -hmm. So the demographics are pretty clear. Um, when it comes to diet, yes, I spent a lot of time watching the way people eat and um, but to get at the diet of longevity I actually have this book right here that does it conveniently um, this that uh, to write that book we did a meta-analysis which you know mm -hmm. uh, we found 155 dietary surveys done in all five blue zones over the past 80 years so if you want to know what a the diet of longevity isn't a noun it's a verb mm -hmm. because the way people have eaten over time is, has, uh, has shifted dramatically. You know, I get these, you know, especially these meat enthusiasts, you know, they, they, uh, they watch my Netflix special and they you say, yeah, Butner was talking about eating plant-based. They don't eat plant-based. I went to Sardinia and they were eating pork chops and prosciutto and they're right. Yeah. But if they took the time to look at the way Sardinians ate before the turn of the millennium, 2000 and before, they were eating about 90% whole food plant-based, meat only five times a month. Um, they're all the blue zones, they're the five pillars of every longevity diet in the world are uh, whole grains, greens and garden vegetables, tubers like sweet potatoes, mm -hmm. In Okinawa, about 70% of all their calories until 1975 came from purple sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm. uh, nuts for snacks. And the cornerstone of every longevity diet in the world is beans. Mm -hmm. If you're eating a couple of beans a day, it's associated with about four extra years of life expectancy. Uh, so they are eating meat, but about five times a month. Uh, not a lot of fish, maybe two or three times a week, very small portions. Um, a, a couple eggs maybe, but they're, you know, the chicken that's running around the yard and out in the pasture and so, so forth, not factory farmed eggs, no cow's dairy mm -hmm. of any substance. And then when it comes to what they're drinking, six glasses of water, teas, green teas and herbal teas, uh, coffee, mm -hmm. convenient for most, and a little bit of wine, a little bit of wine every day. I know the research that Supposedly no level of wine consumption is healthy, but I can tell you in blue zones, people over 80, 90 have drank, the vast majority have drank a little bit every day of their lives, mm -hmm. of their adult lives. And, and they've still gotten into their 90s or 100s and they're sharp and they're enjoying life. And uh, it's not mutually exclusive with having a full, yeah. wonderful life. My grandparents came from Italy, and um, I know. Huh. And actually, in watching the Netflix uh, series, the entire portion on Sardinia actually looked and felt a lot like what they explained their lives to have been like to me. And my grandmother actually lived to be 100. There you go. Well, that bodes well for you. But you know, it, I mean, Italy, you know, the, even though we just looked at Sardinia, Italians live about five years longer than Americans. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, five, five year extra life expectancy. And they eat pasta and drink wine and, you know, don't work all that hard. And they offer us a pretty good, you know, set of lessons that we ought to be paying attention to. Yeah. And by the way, I know all of this enthusiasm behind resveratrol and, and metformin and, and uh, um, stem cells and none of those have offer even a prayer of adding five years of life expectancy at the population level. And here the Italians are doing it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> my grandparents, uh, they ate and drank everything, but they <laughs> also had reasonable portion sizes and exercised and walked a lot, although they did immigrate here when they were fairly young. But still, I think some of, a lot of that culture was just maintained. There was a feeling of 
You know, actually, we always would end the meal with salad. We didn't start the meal with salad. We ended the meal with salad. And I don't know why, but I thought that was great, frankly. Yeah. It seemed to kind of almost like cut all of the pasta that we had eaten before in some way, shape, or form. But yeah, no, um, I... I, I thought that was wonderful. And I, you know, I would agree, certainly, it, we feel like there is no magic bullet here. You know, I actually, this is, I'm going off on a tangent here, but I attended this interesting conference called Aging um, and Drug Discovery Research, ARDD, Aging Research and Drug Discovery. And there were many talks on kind of like what is the the next drug or the pill or supplement or food ingredient that was going to increase your health span, right? And um, it was kind of wild to be there and watch it because the element that was missing entirely was generally having a whole food diet and making sure that you're moving throughout the day, making sure, especially if you have a lot of stress in your life, to be able to balance that with recovery and rest and um, a lot of these other elements that I know you've talked about um, that are community and family. And I love the way that you said it before. It's um, even having a language of a sense of purpose. So it's probably not just that one pill. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah.